Hi, I'm Jack Vale, founder of thepooter.com and farts.com, creator of this guy, the pooter. Welcome to the all new updated pooter tutorial, or pootorial, if you will. I get questions constantly after people receive the pooter trying to figure out how to make it sound like I make it sound in all of my videos. People who have watched my videos for years and they still can't quite do the same thing that I do. I'm going to teach you exactly how you can make your pooter sound exactly like mine. This is what it looks like. It comes in this really cool like clamshell case and people have a tendency to keep this packaging because it kind of stands up you know, on its own like this. So it's almost like its own little display case. People don't realize it's very easy to open the packaging. So people will like grab a knife or car keys and try to like, you know. And actually all you have to do is open it. That's it. It, it comes like this, okay? It has for years. There's an insert inside which has directions on the back to kind of help you out a little bit. Not as good as what this tutorial is gonna teach you how to do, but that's okay. It does honestly immediately work right when you take it out of the box. But you hear that high pitch sound? I'm gonna teach you how to make it sound like this. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So if you wanna know specifically what I use, memorize this packaging. See how it says Jack Vale's official fart toy? It's time for the moment you've been waiting for. Duh. This is what I use in all my videos. I've been selling this thing for 12 years or something like that. I wanted to design the pooter a little bit differently than some of the other products that have been on the market. What we did is we wanted to make sure that the hard top had kind of a rim around it in order to give it an airtight seal. So that when you squeeze it, the rubber doesn't come off of the hard plastic. And all it does is it squeezes air out into the palm of your hand. It is an art. It is a craft and you're gonna learn how to use this thing and I'm here to teach you. The number one thing you gotta do is you gotta find the right spot in your hand. You know that meaty part of your hand or I should say fatty part? See some people they take the pooter out, they squeeze it the wrong way, they don't understand how it works. So you take it out of the package. Oh. Stupid thing, I'm sending this stupid thing back, it won't work. That's what a lot of people do, and they can't get it to work right. That's because the hole has to be pointed into the palm of your hand. Because you gotta think about what this actually is. You know that thing you did when you were a kid, and you like blew on your arm to make a fart sound? That's what this is. This gives you the ability to do that in your pocket, under your arm. Um, where was I? The cool thing about the pooter is you have complete control. If you practice with the pooter, pretty soon you can do all kinds. You can do the bumblebee farts and just at a moment's notice. Bumblebee fart. You can do like the daddy sang bass. Ah, that was more like, I wasn't really a daddy sang bass. I got it. That was a daddy sang bass, definite. You can do the walking farts. If you're shooting a video in public, remember, do not forget that you don't want to do one of these. Okay? You don't want to release it immediately because you hear that suction. Kind of like when you really fart and then, all, and then you, it makes that, that only happens to me probably. <laughs> I've noticed that that's a mistake that people will make. They'll go out in public and they'll squeeze it and immediately do that and then immediately people get tipped off. They go. Uh, wait a minute, I heard something that didn't sound quite right. So make sure you do this. Don't do anything else. Just squeeze it and hold it. Walk away and when you're away from the person or off camera, then slowly just kind of bring it back. That's very, very important. So when you're doing the walking farts, it kind of looks like this. Do 
you got, we should make like a contest or something like that where you guys like see how many times you can actually do the walking farts in one squeeze. Ooh, that might have been a record. The other one that I like to do is I like to come down halfway on it. Hold it. Just hold it. Wait for it. Wait for it. Because they heard it. They're watching. They're wondering what else is going to happen. And then follow it up. <laughs> things happen with these things. It is essentially rubber, right? I mean, it's, it's not indestructible. Keep in mind that if something happens, your dog gets a hold of it or, you know, you get a hole in it or whatever. There are some options out there. There's like a bicycle patch kit that I hear works really, really well. There's like glue products on the market. You can patch up the hole. People ask all the time, why in my videos, so much of the time, do I have my arms folded across like this? If you just do this, it's not quite as believable as, because then it kind of muffles the sound and people aren't really sure exactly where it came out of. Everybody immediately knows, no matter what it sounds like, it's an unfamiliar sound in some way, because farts sound different, you know, like every single time, pretty much. You never really know what kind of sound to expect next. So when you go back through and watch my videos, watch what people do every single time I do it. Every time, no matter what it sounds like, people turn and what do they do? They look down. They're looking at where they think the fart came from as if they're gonna see something, which hopefully they never have. Also, when you're pranking your friends, remember this, less is more. You just find that little, <laughs> that little quick little sound. Just don't think it's gotta be some big, you know, just a little tiny little, and then just go back to your business. That's it, just, and pretend like it didn't even happen. It's very, very important when you can to keep the pooter in your hand and apply just a little bit of pressure. Basically what you're doing is you're heating up your hand if you apply a little pressure and just keep it there for a little while. So if you think you're gonna prank somebody just five minutes before, Put it in your hand, even in your pocket. Ooh, that's really nice, it warms up your whole, just put your hands in your pocket, and then it's warmed up and ready to go. You know, it's primed and ready. See what I mean? And also, don't feel like you have to hold it like this. Go down a little bit, let a little air out, get about halfway in, that way you can do that little burnt sound. See what I mean? Rubber is kind of inconsistent, so you gotta kinda Move it around and find that sweet little, that little bend so that you're, you can, oh, there, this is gonna be a good one, I can already tell. So you gotta, that's what you gotta do. Different people have different experiences with this thing, like some people discover that maybe they're right-handed, but the pooter works better in their left hand, or vice versa, you're left-handed, but some reason, and a lot of that has to do with the fact that, you know, you're, nobody's built the same, exactly, so when you find that little, that little meaty part of your hand, then that's gonna be the sweet spot. And you'll never forget it. You're gonna do this. That's not it. That's not it. Oh, this, oh, wait. Oh, I got it, I got it. And you're gonna automatically know every single time you find that spot again. One of the other mistakes that people will make with the pooter is, as soon as you get it, you finally find the right hole placement to skin, and you line it up, but you're still not quite doing it right because your initial instincts might be to put pressure on the pooter with your fingertips. Usually what you'll do is you'll push like this. What you wanna do is you wanna push with the backs of your fingers. So think of it like this, like when you finally get the pooter positioned, you wanna kinda of put a dent in the back side of the pooter with your knuckles. So you kinda of wanna do that. See how it kinda of makes a dent there? See what I mean? As opposed to your fingertips. See how without the pooter, you start to do that? If you just do this with your fingertips, it doesn't change the shape of your hand whatsoever. But if you start squeezing with the backs of your fingers, watch. See the skin start to come up in your hand? It creates a tighter seal and gives it that sound that you're looking for. Another technique I like to use sometimes is if I'm in a store, I'll take the pooter like this and I'll kind of put it down maybe behind my back because it's black and you can't really tell that anybody's really holding anything most of the time. So if you take your thumb and put it in your back pocket, 
because then you got the pooter coming out of the right area so that if you're walking away from somebody and you do it and they hear it really turn look they immediately think that it's coming from that area and therefore it sounds like a real fart so we have something else called pooter wax pooter wax is somewhat sticky kind of like a chapstick sort of uh, you know substance if you just rub a little bit around the outside of the pooter hole see you get a nice sharp deep tone see what I mean all right that's it for me hope you enjoyed the pooter tutorial hope it's helped you a little bit uh, you can watch all my socials here YouTube Twitter Instagram uh, Facebook locals rumble all of that stuff here so I look forward to seeing you guys later and I'll talk to you soon bye